Welcome back to today's News Talk. I'm delighted to be joined by David Kurt, and I've talked to David many times before. David is the leader of the Heritage Party. Now, for those who know me, I am not a great fan of politicians, but I happen to like David, and for one simple reason, and that is David is an honest politician. Do they exist? Yes, they do. Welcome to today's News Talk, David. Absolutely lovely to see you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, Sonia. Good to join you on the show again. Yes, I know. Well, a completely different show, but yes, absolutely. David, I mean, as I say, you're an honest politician. You've been honest about yeah. so much, about the climate change scam, about uh, the, the nonsense to do with gender. And the thing about you, which is so unlike almost the vast majority of politicians, is you're not looking for the populist vote. You don't say things and like, am I saying things in order not to be people, not to be angry with me? You say it because you believe it. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about actually right now is, and I, I, I did refer to it on yesterday's show, and that was the cartoon by a cartoonist and illustrator, Bob Moran. Bob was the first guest on the Sonia Poulton show last week, How Time Flies. And this incredible stink and furore came up around um, the image that he had put out uh, several days ago, which was of Benjamin Netanyahu. And people say it's anti-Semitic, it's blood libel, and it, there's Joe Biden pouring him blood from a wine bottle. And there's Rishi Sunak, who's kind of haplessly being a waiter. And you can see the arm of a, a dangling arm of a child. And it's horrible. It's it's brutal. It's graphic. But that is obviously the point in many respects of political cartoonists. But tell us your take, David. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Sonia. I mean, I think it's just best to tell the truth, you know, and just put out there what you actually believe and what you actually think, because, you know, people are so fed up of bait and switch and people beating around the bush and not saying what they think and then finding out what, um, you know, that they're actually going to do the exact opposite of what they said. But, you know, with this cartoon, I do agree with you. It is brutal. It's horrible. It's jarring. Um, it's not a pleasant thing to look at. I don't particularly like seeing things like that, but it's making a point. And that's what it is. It's more than just a piece of entertainment. It's making a very pertinent point that actually what's happening at the moment in Gaza is horrible. It's a massacre. Children are being killed and they're being killed by the nation that calls itself Israel. And they say, you know, people commentators say, well, Israel has the right to defend itself. And they put out other lines like, oh, Israel is the only country that's not allowed to win a war. But obviously what happened? on the 7th of October uh, was horrible. It was horrendous. What It was the fault of Hamas, of course, and, and uh, that that's ter terrible. But then what Israel has done in response is even worse because they've cut off the water supply. They've cut off the electricity. They've basically carpet bombed half of Gaza, uh, destroyed hundreds of thousands of homes, um, killed 30,000 plus people it is now, as far as I know, including 10, maybe 15,000 children, and they're being slaughtered. And those children are completely innocent. And so what Bob is doing, Bob Moran in the cartoon is doing, is drawing attention to this. But then, of course, now he's been accused of anti-Semitism, which I think is, is totally erroneous. He's not at all. He is criticizing an individual person, the head of state of this country that calls itself Israel and what it's doing in Gaza and, and the massacre there. And I think if you're more concerned about a cartoon and cancelling a cartoon than concerned about the deaths of women, children, and innocent men as well in Gaza, um, then there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with, you know, what you are reacting to. Uh, and that, in a way, indicates the very, very strong programming and nudging and uh, manipulation by psychological, behavioral psychology units and, and propaganda to get people to think and react in this way to a cartoon when they're not reacting to the slaughter of 10,000 children. Right. And also there's a dangerous conflation there, isn't there, that if we criticize the Israeli government, then we automatically must be anti-Semitic. That is not 
good for any of us, is it? Because obviously what that does is it completely closes down any debate. It enables them just to carry on at will, behaving exactly how they want. How do we overcome that? Because some, I mean, obviously some Jewish people definitely do feel that in England, all over the world, definitely do feel that they are under attack from what has taken place since October the 7th. Obviously it was going on way before that. We know that. But how do we uh, seek to reassure people that this isn't about anti-Semitism, but this is about criticism of a regime. You, well, there's a very interesting word you meant, you said in your, in that sort of little section there, it's people are feel that they're under attack, but just because people feel something, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are under attack. And what we have today is a whole culture and law being created around feelings and subjective feelings rather than objective reality. Now, if someone has committed a crime, a real crime, assault or murder or rape or um, fraud or criminal damage or vandalism, that's a real crime. But just people feeling as though that there's someone has said something that they don't like or there's something going on that makes them feel uncomfortable, that's not a crime. And that happens all day, every day to millions and billions of people. So we have to distinguish that from what's actually happening. And the reality of the situation is, well, what happens in southern Israel with Hamas is terrible. What's happening in Gaza is terrible now. But the other thing there is that... Um, it's been as always portrayed as anti-Semitic. If you even hint at criticism of the state of Israel, which is completely wrong. And, you know, the point I made uh, on a discussion a couple of days ago is that the you've got this working definition of anti-Semitism now, which has been created by the International Holocaust Remembrance Association. Um, but this is unofficial. It's just a group that's set up uh, about 10 years ago and made this definition and and then these 11 different points or if you if you do this you're anti-semitic if you say this you're anti-semitic i can't remember all of the things on it but um you know it, they said it's not anti-Semitic to criticize Israel, but, you know, to to hold Israel to a different standard to other nations is anti-Semitic. But that's being used to smear anybody who criticizes Israel now, because right. even criticizing what they do is saying, oh, you're holding it to a higher standard when people are not. We're just saying stop killing people and cease fire. Right. Absolutely. These should not be unreasonable positions. Let me go to the comments. Hidden in plain sight says Bob Moran was sharp on what was happening years ago. He's always shown the truth. Hope and love and peace. It's absolutely awful what's happening in Gaza. It's heartbreaking. It really is. Truly it is. Bob is a hero, says Chris. He stands for humanity. To oppose this shows a lack of humanity. David, do you not find it curious, though, that uh, people who were very vociferous during the COVID years about, you know, the censorship that we were dealing with, about our freedom of speech, have, have come out and are some of Bob's greatest dissenters. That's interesting, isn't it? Laura Dodsworth, for one example, obviously tagged the CPS the um, and the Metropolitan Police, clearly wanting charges or at least an investigation to take place. What are your thoughts on that? I think this is shocking. I, I really don't understand it, how people say that they're for freedom. She even wrote a book about, you know, freeing your mind or something. And, uh, you know, the, the state of fear about how the state was inculcating fear and therefore we were controlled to not say things. And then she's like uh, tagging the police and the CPS in, indicating that she would like Bob Moran to be arrested and dragged through the courts for drawing a cartoon. And, you know, th this exactly mirrors the people that we've been attacked by on on the cultural Marxist far left for 10 years or more. You know, right. we rude, you know, how people would accuse me and others of being homophobic, transphobic, racist, anti-vaxxers, conspiracy theorists. But then when Bob does something which is just a cartoon, you have people who, who say they're for freedom then saying, oh, but this is anti-Semitic. We have to cancel him in exactly the same way that the cultural Marxists of the far left would cancel us. It doesn't make any sense. And you only think, well, there must be something inside them that's either, you know, a cognitive dissonance or, or perhaps, you know, they actually are in some way, you know, fulfilling a function um, in order to advance <laughs> the agenda of anti-Semitism. I mean, that I, is I, interesting. I, 
I mean, of course, you're just theorizing as as indeed you're allowed to. I believe we are still allowed opinions in this world, oddly enough. I mean, obviously not for much longer. But uh, at this moment in time, well, we well, we are. We should be able to say them. But the fact is, is, as I know, plenty of Jewish people who are extremely critical about what is going on in Israel. And again, we shouldn't conflate Zionism, obviously, the support of the Jewish state and all the problems that have clearly come as a consequence of that with Judaism. And so I, I think it, it, who is who is benefiting from muddling all this up, do you think? I mean, is it wider agendas? Because it is quite clear, isn't it, David, that media are largely on the side of the Israeli government as, as opposed to the Palestinian people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you say that there's Zionism and there's Judaism, the religion, but there's also the Jewish people. And, you know, there there are ethnic Jews who are, who are neither practices of Judaism and also are neither practices of Zionism as well. But this does seem to support, in, in one sense, the, the state of Israel. Um, but in another sense, what's happening here in the agenda uh, against free speech, because what I can see happening is you've got this definition of anti-Semitism, which has been created that is voluntary that doesn't have the force of law but they're going around trying to get all kinds of institutions to sign up to it and then there's also a definition of an islamophobia and then people are going around trying to get people to sign up to that and then this um homophobia and transphobia what i think the game plan here is in our country and in, in western countries is to get these voluntary definitions agreed to by enough people and enough organizations that then the government can say oh well everybody agrees to this or 90 percent of people agree to this and then they will write it into law and then these definitions will have the force of law and then you will be arrested and dragged through the courts if you oh. say something that somebody deems to be anti-semitic this looks like where it's going it's a very slow game plan but i can see absolutely that this scary i hear you listen david thank you so much for joining me this morning everybody this has been david curtin thank you to all our wonderful guests thank you to you thank you to the team this is today's news talk.